guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you part one of my June wrap-up. I haven't done a video since like the second day of June, and I finished nine books in the month. So I mentioned that first one, which was the Florence Harding biography already, and basically I didn't like it, and so I don't think you should read it. So there's no use wasting breath on it. But then I'm going to show you the next four books that I read and briefly talk about them. And then I'll do the last four in a separate video. So let's just get right into it. The first book I want to talk about is All the Money in the World. What, pe what the Happiest People Know About Getting and Spending by Laura Vanderkam. I actually thought I might do a review of this book, which is sort of why I never filmed anything this month. I kept expecting to, you know, sit down and write a script, and then I just never got around to it, and then I didn't want to film anything else because I hadn't filmed my review. Anyway, so this is a popular financial book, and it's sort of about how you can use your money to make your life better, and not in the traditional way we think of, like, acquiring more stuff or a bigger house, but, like, in improving the world in the way you want to improve it. But then it's also about, like, thinking outside the box when it comes to, like, your life and your money. So, for example, in her introduction, she talks about the concept of engagement rings and how people spend so much money on engagement rings now, but if you took that money and put it in a savings account, you know, 10 years down the line, when you have three kids and you're worn out all the time, you can use that money for date night, and you could go on a date, like, once a week for six months with that money, and I don't that would do a lot more to help your marriage than buying an engagement ring. And she also talks about, like, retirement and how people have this idea that, you know, don't save enough money and then they can live for, like, 30 years in retirement. And now, you know, that's not very practical. And so she suggests, you know, saving for retirement, but also looking for a second career and planning your life around part-time work and doing things like that. And she also talks about, like, houses, people... Could, you know, buy these big houses because they think they're a crucial part of the American dream, but you could get away with dress, and she also talked about, like, the cost of children and things like that. So it's a pretty interesting book. I will say this is, this book is meant for, like, a very limited population, I would say, because she doesn't really talk about, like, people that are in debt, and so, and she also, like, for example, she has a chapter about earning more money, and she's like, you can start an Etsy shop, you could, you know, you could do job training, you could do this, you could do that, and it's like, if you're already working, you know, three jobs to make ends meet, you're not really going to have time to, you know, work another job or develop another source of income, and she also talks about, like, the very last chapter is about, like, um, funding causes that you believe in, and so she talks about, like, buying organic or buying from local businesses, which is a very, you know, noteworthy cause and definitely something you should do if you have the money. But if you don't have the money, you know, it's kind of hard to do stuff like this. So I would say this is sort of a limited viewpoint. And so it was interesting, but I don't necessarily recommend it unless you have a lot of money, you know, not a lot. But like, you don't have to be a millionaire, but you do have to, you know, have some disposable income and have free time to do a lot of what she recommends in this book. I then read my, for my workbook at the start of the month, I read The Secret Keeper by Kate Morton. This is a dual um, timeline novel where we're following Laurel, who is a famous actress, and she has come to see her mother because her mother is dying and her mother has this secret and she is trying to figure this out and she also one time when she was about 16 she witnessed her mother kill a man and so she's always wondered why her mother killed that man and she wants to you know figure out the cause and so then we get flashbacks during world war ii in 1941 during the london blitz and we see her mother dorothy and how her mother's life plays out and things happen and so we get to see you know the how the secret plays out i really enjoyed this it was really interesting interesting 
interesting. And there was a big twist at the end that I was not expecting, and I was completely surprised. And I was like, wow, that's an amazing twist. And so, yeah, I really recommend this if you're looking for a good historical fiction novel. This is the first Kate Morton novel I've ever read, but a lot of people really love her, and I can see why. It's just a really fascinating book and a really interesting plot, and yeah, I highly recommend this. I then read in like the course of one day, one Sunday afternoon, I read Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This is the second Agatha Christie I've read after and then there were none. Um, Elizabeth over at Leslie Phillips Books sent me this back in March, during March Mystery Madness. And so I just decided to pick it up on a whim. I was looking for something short and sweet, and this was really short and sweet. Um, if you haven't heard of this, this is the famous um, train mystery. All of the, the, one of the passengers on a train is murdered, and you, the, you know, the murderer has to be within the train because who else could have done it? And so Perot, Hercule, Hercules, Hercule Perot is attempting to figure out who did it, and he's going through all the suspects. He calls them in one by one and interviews them, and you find out that. Um, Oh, I don't know if it's a spoiler or not, but you find out that they all have a connection to this one family, and so you are starting to realize that there's a potential motive for, like, each um, person. And so it's a really interesting book. Um, I was glad I read it. I actually, after I read this, I picked up the Kenneth Braha version of this movie, of this book, the new movie version, and I watched that, and that was pretty good and very dramatic. I would say that the movie was sort of a lot more philosophical than the book. The book is, I would say, more of a straightforward murder mystery novel, a bit with like an interesting format. But in the movie, they make it seem like Perot was like devastated by this mystery, which I don't really think is, I think that was just dramatic license. So this was interesting, but not you know, I would recommend you read this because it's referenced all the time. So yeah, it was a really good mystery. I gave it four stars, so yeah, it was great. The last book I want to mention briefly, I read a professional development book. I read Adult Programs in the Library by Brett W. Lear, and this was a very step-by-step -step, um, guide to planning programs for developing an idea, to getting funding, to, you know, figuring out what kind of performer you want to get, to setting up your room on the day you do the program to, you know, partnerships and all sorts of things. And it also has a big appendix at the back where you can look at all these different kinds of programs that were highly rated and that got a large turnout and things like that. So yeah, that was a really good book and I'm glad I read it because I'm working on a program for financial literacy at my work. So the first four books that I, well, first five books I meant that I read in June, that I finished in June, I'll be back with part two pretty quick. I hope everybody had a great reading month in June and I'll talk to you again later. Bye!